Hi, everyone. I am here with Brandy Villegas, who is a professor of political science and also the coordinator of the Civic Engagement Speaker Series. So, Brandy, let's get started. Uh, what is your favorite food truck? Yeah, so I'm fairly new to the area, so I don't know uh, what it's called. It's over here on like in front of or across from the auto zone on Houston. It's like a Mexican food truck. They sell really good tortas there, so um, I enjoy it. I just don't know the name, so my apologies. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and what is the main reason you chose teaching? Um, I was really inspired to teach by some of my own community college professors and then my professors at CSU Bakersfield really encouraged me to apply to graduate school. I had no idea you could even, or what a PhD was, or like, I was like, I, I don't have my master's yet. I can't apply it. Right. Um, and so I had some great mentors along the way who just really inspired me to be that teacher and that mentor for students in the future. Awesome. And what courses do you teach? So I currently teach Poli Sci 5, which is local, state, and federal government, which is the course that kind of everyone has to take. And then I'm also teaching a new course uh, here at COS called Introduction to Political Science, which focuses, focuses a lot more on the subdisciplines in Poli Sci uh, and some of the debates within the, the discipline. And what is uh, your proudest non-teaching accomplishment? Yeah, so uh, it's a tough one, but kind of a tie. Um, I, I don't know um, if I can classify them as a tie or not, but uh, I'm actually featured in the California State Capitol Museum for a lot of my work on social justice issues in Kern County in the Central Valley. And then the other accomplishment is um, I marched a summer of drum corps with the Santa Clara Vanguard Cadets. It's basically like professional marching band or marching band on steroids. And we won a world championship when I marched. So that was pretty cool too. Wow. <laughs> so, um, this, it leads into the next question, kind of, but what is something most people don't know about your past? Um, yeah, I would say that I, um, I was heavily involved in the marching arts for years. So I marched with the Bakersfield College Drumline, um, even after I had graduated from um, BC. And uh, we went to world championships and competed several times. I marched with the mayor cadets, and then I um, continued to teach percussion. I still do a little bit right now in my free time. So I volunteer uh, with Golden West High School and helping their drumline. So uh, yeah, not a lot of people know I was really involved in drumline, and uh, sometimes they don't know about organizing and um, activism and stuff like that, too. So what's your Watch It a Thousand Times movie? Hmm, it's hard. I, I would probably have to say uh, Inception, just because I really love that movie. It blew my mind when I first saw it, and um, just really appreciate all the ideas in it. And how about your late work policy? Yeah, so my policy for late work is basically communication is key. I know students have responsibilities, whether it's work or family ob obligations, or we have student parents as well. And so just like I would tell them if they were, you know, um, employed, some of them are employed, you know, you would communicate with your supervisor if something's up. And so basically, just communication is key for everything. Yeah, and then uh, similar to that, what's your absence policy? Yeah, I, I looking at this question, I had to think about this because I've only been teaching online. So my absence policy has been related to our participation on discussion boards. But similar to late work, communication is key. Um, if you know you're going to be absent, right, reach out to me, drop by student office hours to discuss anything you might have missed. Um, and, you know, let's work together to find a solution. If someone hasn't been attending for several weeks and, you know, it's coming up on the drop date, I'll reach out to a student. And um, if I don't hear back from them, I'll drop them. Or if I hear back from them and, you know, they're explaining their circumstances and we'll work together to get them caught up. Yeah, I really love that you frame this as a communication kind of uh, sort of a topic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, another uh, question. Uh, what's one piece of advice you have for your students? Yeah, um, this is one piece of advice I wish I would have, like, given myself in the future or, like, a future self could come back. But um it's come back to the Central Valley, regardless of what you do, um, you know, once you're done here at COS, whether you transfer, find work experience, go off far away or to a neighboring town, you know, get that experience and then come back to the Central Valley and contribute to making it a better place. Um, I used to be one of those kids who said, as soon as I turn 18, I'm leaving, you know, the Central Valley and never coming back. And today I couldn't be farther from that, you know, sort of mentality and mindset. And I think the more folks we have coming back to make the Central Valley a better place, the more it's going to improve. And, you know, the more we'll reverse some of the statistics that we're unfortunately known for. How about your pets? 
Yeah, so my wife and I adopted uh, Cinnamon Viegas last year during the pandemic. And so he's a, a cute little guy. And then recently, just about two weeks ago, um, we adopted another young guy, of Spice. So we have Cinnamon and Spice keep each other company. And we adopted him here at the Valley Oak uh, SPCA. So. And are, are these dogs or cats? Uh, they're both dogs. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Nothing against cats. I like cats too. But <laughs> it's happening with dogs. <laughs> So they're your spice boys, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, cinnamon and spice. They uh, keep each other company and they love to fight. <laughs> Play so fight. on a Sunday, would you rather hike a mountain or kill zombies? Um, I want to say hike a mountain, but if I'm being honest, probably kill zombies. You know, I, I love video games and um, I like exercising too, but I probably like enjoy video games more. So. <laughs> and what's your favorite uh, recent teaching moment? Yeah, my favorite recent teaching moment was actually asking my students about to reflect on their own participation. And I had a student, you know, since we talk about how they voted in the first election because they finally turned 18 and just how they were super excited to use everything they learned in class to, you know, make their voice heard on the issues that they cared about. So that's a, a recent teaching moment that I enjoyed. If you have a long weekend, where do you want to go? Yeah, um, Probably to visit family, um, either here in the Central Valley um, or farther away and just, you know, spend some time relaxing, eating good food and playing video games or board games or card games. Um, Cards Against Humanity is a really fun but really bad game <laughs> to play. Um, but yeah. Are you a do it now or wait until the last minute person? Uh, I'd say a combination of both. I usually have like so much on my plate that I try to always do things ahead of time, but inevitably, you know, I'm scrambling doing something at the last minute. Apart from teaching, what's another career <laughs> that you could, that you would pursue? Oh, yeah. I, I can not hear you because my dog is screaming. <laughs> <laughs> How could you repeat that? Um, other than teaching, what's another career that you'd pursue? Yeah. For a long time, I actually wanted to become an immigration lawyer. <laughs> and that stems from the fact that, um, I'm the first one in my family born here. My parents are still undocumented. I'm actually in the process right now of sponsoring them for citizenship. It's been you know, a long time coming. So uh, probably something to do with immigration law or um, working for a public advocacy organization, um, something in that realm. What is your favorite anxiety reliever? Yeah, my favorite anxiety reliever would probably have to be um, a combination of both exercising and then playing video games. Um, I, I try to exercise and do like home workout videos, um, playing video games, but honestly, just like these two also, um, I'll show you, this is Spice since they're right here. Oh! And what's funny is that they both have a huge uh, underbite and they've you know definitely been a huge anxiety reliever as well because oh. they uh, make me laugh. And this is Cinnamon, he's a little bit bigger. Oh, what a sweetheart. Yeah. So hopefully our dogs can meet too. <laughs> I want that. If you if you can yeah. tell from my virtual background, uh, yeah. my belief is as long as you have dogs, uh, everything can be fine, even if it's a flaming mess. Most definitely, great anxiety relievers as well. I know when I come home, they're both charging at me and you know <laughs> eager to greet me. So, what is one inanimate object you'd take to a desert island? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I'd probably have to say. A uh, pair of drumsticks, um, just so I can, you know, have something to do when I'm bored. Mm -hmm. I feel like I can drum for hours uh, and not get bored easily. So, and what's your favorite thing about your job? My favorite thing about my job is just being able to see the spark on students' faces when they are able to connect politics to their everyday lives and also seeing the transformation at the end of the semester. I get so many students who come into the class saying, you know, I don't really do politics. It's so divisive or, you know, I'm not really political. And then, you know, I tell them from day one, everything is political. And by the end of the course, I think you know, they're able to see that um, and hopefully apply that within their everyday life. And so your office decor, is it minimalist or maximalist? Um, I'd probably say minimalist just because I've been working from home. Uh, so Next semester, I'll be a lot more in the office uh, in Tulare, and uh, I've decorated a little bit. I feel like a mini fridge in there, but definitely I'm more on the minimalist side. What is the biggest obstacle you would remove from students if you could? 
I would definitely have to say um, any and all financial barriers, right? Not, so many students have to work multiple jobs or, um, you know, have various um, responsibilities in their lives. And so especially transferring out of COS, um, but even at COS with the cost of textbooks, et cetera, I'm try, I try to be very conscious about that in my own uh, courses that I teach. So uh, eliminating financial barriers, you know, having students being able to access universal tuition-free education would be an awesome thing to see within my lifetime because it's happened before. It used to be the norm in California, but it yeah. isn't anymore. Well, in many countries, it's the norm. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the final question, what is the best thing about being a COSTA member? I think the best thing about being a COSTA member is finding community within COS beyond just our departments or division. I feel like I've been able to connect with so many other faculty members. I was a part of a union uh, at UC Santa Cruz. I'm, I'm still there technically trying to finish up my PhD. Um, and, you know, I'm just proud and happy to be a union member uh, in both of those locations and both of these institutions. Thank you so much, Randy, and have a wonderful day. Thank you. You as well.